வணக்கம் வெல்கம் டு திஸ் வீடியோ ஆன் பயோ மெக்கானிக்ஸ் இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வில் கண்டினியூ அவர் டிஸ்கஷன் ஆன் இன்ட்ரோடக்டரி மெக்கானிக்ஸ் ஆன் ஸ்டாட்டிக்ஸ் அண்ட் டைனமிக்ஸ் ஸோ இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வி வில் டிஸ்கஸ் அபவுட் தி வேரியஸ் டைப்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஜாயின்ஸ் இன் த ஹியூமன் பாடி one type of joint in the human body that is easy to observe is the hinge joint hinge joint in this case this joint can move either uh, can rotate either in di- this direction or in that direction that is it has a single degree of freedom for example the elbow joint this flexion of the forearm this flexion and the extension happens it's a single degree of freedom well actually this movement also happens but that's not fully a elbow joint movement okay so that is outside the scope of this discussion and here we are discussing this right it's a single degree of freedom joint a hinge joint it has one degree of freedom the example is the elbow joint okay then you have these saddle joints it's a very special type of joint you call this as a saddle because it resembles the saddle of a horse rider right so this person can either go front or back anterior posterior direction or left or right in the medio lateral direction so there are two movements that are possible and at any given point in time the net movement is a function of these two movements as vectors something that is easy to say but somewhat difficult to visualize so how many degrees of freedom does this have obviously there are two degrees of freedom because there is the anterior posterior movement and there is the medio lateral movement so there are two degrees of freedom the example is the thumb carpo metacarpal joint that happens between the trapezium bone and the first metacarpal right that is the thumb can either make that movement or it can make that movement but then at any given point in time if the thumb is doing that for example is a is a combination of these two movements so how much each of this movement has contributed to the net inclination of the thumb it's not very easy to model you have to take it from me when i say this because i work extensively in hand function specifically we have now begun working on kinematics of hand function and something that we had great difficulty in modeling and understanding was this particular movement of the thumb right difficult to model then you have the ball and socket joint example of the ball and socket joint of course this has 3 degrees of freedom example of the ball and socket joint is the shoulder joint and the hip joint okay. so that means this ball can rotate in any of the three axes but cannot translate there's no translation possible but there are three possible rotations okay so an expectation is that because there is no translation possible there will be a great amount of stability that can be ensured but the amount of rotations that are possible especially in the shoulder is so huge that you are not able to have a great amount of stability 
uh, which is why frequently you have dislocations of the shoulder joint and it is a serious problem. Then you have the pivot joint. This is the case where the rotation happens about this pivot, right? this rotation. So, that is the rotation that is possible. Right? The number of degrees of freedom is 1 and this is what is seen in the neck joint for example, like that I can, like that I can move like this. This is of course possible through the pivot joint in the Atlanto, Atlanto axial joint. This is the joint between the atlas and the axis, okay, Atlanto axial joint in the neck, the pivot joint, okay. So, the number of degrees of freedom varies, the amount of movement increases and different types of uh, these joints give rise to different amounts of movements within the available degrees of freedom. So, it is not just the number of degrees of freedom, but it is also the amount of movement that is possible, right. So, or the range of motion that is possible, okay. Some examples. So, at the neck you have the Atlanta axial joint which is a pivot joint, and the shoulder is a ball and socket joint, the elbow is a hinge joint, then you have the, you have the CMC joint, right, which is a saddle joint, like this person who is sitting on a saddle, is a horse rider sitting on a saddle. He can go to his left or right depending on the movement of the horse or to the front or the back. So, there are two degrees of freedom that are possible. Then you have a nearly perfect hinge joint in the, in the knee and a plain joint in the ankle, okay. And of course, the hip joint is a ball and socket joint. And then you have the wrist joint, which is an ellipsoid joint, as is the metacarpophalangeal joint, because the wrist joint, because the wrist joint, I can make that movement, or I can perform radial and ulnar deviations. I can perform, you know, ulnar deviation or radial deviation. I can also flex and extend uh, an ellipsoid joint. As with the fingers, I can flex or extend the metacarpophalangeal joint. I can also abduct or adduct. Remember, abduction, adduction of the wrist is not called abduction, adduction, but rather as radial and ulnar deviation of the wrist, okay. But for the finger, that movement is possible, this sideways movement is possible, this is called abduction, adduction of the metacarpophalangeal joint, it is an ellipsoid joint, okay. This is the wrist that is marked here, okay. This is the, the neck or the Atlanto axial joint. Of course, this is the shoulder, this is the elbow, this is the thumb, carpo metacarpal joint joint between the trapezium and the first metacarpal. This is the hip and this plane joint is the ankle joint, okay. Some others we are not discussing just to leave as an exercise for you to check, do check this. So, one more is the hinge joint in the proximal interphalangeal joint and the distal interphalangeal joint of the fingers. For example, this movement is the proximal interphalangeal joint movement and that movement is the distal interphalangeal joint movement. These are modeled as hinge joint because there is only one degree of freedom that is possible either flexion or extension. Then I have that movement that is possible for the, for the metacarpophalangeal joint either flexion, extension or abduction, adduction or a complicated movement like this, which can be modeled as a sum of these two movements, right. And this is an 
ellipsoid joint remember the mcp joint is an ellipsoid joint whereas the distal interphalangeal joint and the proximal interphalangeal joint are hinge joints the mcp joint is a ellipsoid joint whereas for the thumb the cmc joint is a saddle joint okay so in this video we looked at uh, the various types of joints within the human body we looked at uh, the joint in the neck which is a pivot joint then we looked at uh, the elbow joint which is a hinge joint we looked at the shoulder joint which is a ball and socket joint we looked at the wrist joint which is an ellipsoid joint and the metacarpophalangeal joint which is an, ellip an ellipsoid joint the carpo metacarpal joint of the thumb is a saddle joint the knee joint is a hinge joint the ankle joint is a plane joint the hip joint is a ball and socket joint we looked at all these joints in the human body with this we come to the end of this video thank you very much for your attention